Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Winston Damarillo. So there's always good news and bad news when you follow Sheila uh, in a speaking engagement, right? The good news is everybody's guaranteed to be awake and engaged and ready to hear what you're about to say. And the bad news is you think to yourself, how do you top that, right? It's fantastic. So what I'd like to do is, is talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial mindset. What drives entrepreneurs to do more than one thing? And what keeps the entrepreneur's energy going? Right? And so a, a quick background of myself is that um, I never had the good fortune of uh, going to a university in the United States. Um, mostly w what I've had is an education here in the Philippines at De La Salle University, where I graduated um, industrial engineering with uh, minor in mechanical engineering. Uh, but what, uh, what I did have is a gift from my parents of entrepreneurship mindset. I grew up listening to my mom and dad in the dining table, talking about the various businesses that they ran. I was there when our businesses failed. I was there when my mom said, hey, this is the worst that could happen. We can always just go back up and build a business again. And I was there when they moved from a fairly comfortable home in the Philippines to one bedroom. And all six of us stayed in one room and still made sure that I go to La Salle and get my schooling. So it was that same mindset of entrepreneurship that when I decided to go to the United States and wanted to take what I've got and, and work for the largest technology companies in the United States at Intel, Microsoft, or IBM, I said, I'm only going to work for those three companies, right? And I'm going to compete with Stanford grads, MIT grads, Harvard grads, and I'm going to find a way to get there. And it took me more than 12 times to do this, right? And the entrepreneurial spirit you know, in me, from that particular mindset of, of trying to get there and not giving up, led me to, you know, if I cannot prove to Intel that they should hire me based on my diploma, I should probably just write something in software and bring it to Intel, <laughs> right? And, and that, then that worked. And that was the first, my first real experience of entrepreneurship for myself. And since then, I had an opportunity to work at Intel Capital, where I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs get built, companies got funded. I had an opportunity to see two disruptive events in technology. Number one was open source, where we decided that software was getting way too expensive and way too complicated, and there's a global community of people that's going to write software for free. And it's going to be the best written 80% complete software. Things like Linux, MySQL, you know, early versions of, of databases, and that that was going to be a business, and that business was going to be disruptive. <clears throat> and the definition of disruptive was going to be such that even if IBM knows exactly what's coming to them, they cannot do anything about it. It's just going to happen. Right? So that was you know, kind of a couple of trends that I've seen to do that. And again, the entrepreneur in me basically said, OK, I think you've served your time at Intel. It's time to leave. Uh, build your own open source company. And since you never got accepted at IBM, let's go compete with IBM. <laughs> We had, we had an opportunity, at this time it was a, 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 a starting point of the Java phenomena. The internet was new, the language of choice then was Java, and IBM, Microsoft, um, Sun Microsystems, and Oracle basically said, hey, we're going to own Java. And it's going to be the same enterprise software type that we're going to bring to market and bring to market and, and continuously make that price more expensive. And this is when we applied the open source mindset. So uh, along with a small group of team, we decided that open source was the way and that we develop a product called Apache Geronimo open source at Apache and then turn that into a, an enterprise product that competes with IBM and basically said, it's going to be as good as your product, but it's built differently. And more importantly, the business model is going to be different. We're no longer selling licenses. We're selling support subscription, right? And that really changed the rules of the game, improved the innovation, and, and disrupted IBM. And uh, this company that we started in 2003 was eventually then acquired by IBM in, in 2005. 
So just like at Intel, I had to go bring software to IBM to get to IBM. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's happening. But the, the, the other thing that I'd really want to share, especially to our you know, budding Filipino entrepreneurs, is that idea that if you are willing enough and passionate enough to take on big challenges, it can be done. And one admission I would, was going to say is I wasn't sure that that's inherent in Filipinos. In fact, there were times, and I'm not proud about this, where I described myself more as a Chinese than a Filipino when asked about technology and entrepreneurship. And since then, I've, I've taken that mindset and brought it back to the Philippines and now saying, can it be really done? Right? So, I'm happy to report that s since the time uh, with Dado's leadership and the rest of PhilDev, that we've been spending time to really think if Filipinos can do this, that our young Filipino entrepreneurs will have that entrepreneurial mindset and that question posing in our head, we've now taken it to the, to the field. We've actually said, is it possible, right, for Filipinos to think out of the box like Sheila and mini Sheila's, right, to find their passion and to take that step to be entrepreneurs. And over the years that we've been working on this, uh, one a great example of, of fruits of that labor is, is a project that PhilDev has initiated called Hack to Hatch. We brought <clears throat> 22 of the most promising Filipino entrepreneurs in Cebu. We put them on a competition, and, and basically we're seeing that this is something that's, not, it's something that's now um, <clears throat> a phenomenon that Filipinos are ready to do. We're very, very excited to do this. And this, as an entrepreneur, drives energy for me. I still work in Silicon Valley. I'm still in Los Angeles. I still have the best American engineers and architects that we can find in Los Angeles. The key difference is in Silicon Valley and in Los Angeles, it takes a lot of effort to hire the best talent and to keep the best talent. They always seem entitled. But when I come home to the Philippines and meet my team and meet the, the entrepreneurs that I meet every day, I get this thank you for giving us a greatest opportunity to work on the coolest thing, right? And so every time I get depressed and managing teams in the U.S., I come to the Philippines and, and get that energy going again, right? And that's working really well. So I'm really excited about what's going in in the Philippines in particular. This is a good news that's unfolding. I want to share that with everyone. These are actual people that we are hanging out every day. We're meeting, that we talk to at Facebook, that we hang out at Skype, and they ask us questions and we give them answers. And it's the greatest way to relive your early days, your entrepreneurial starts. And in a lot of cases for me, when I seem to forget fundamentals, by teaching them, I get reminded of that. And that's, that's true, and that's happening here in the Philippines. And it's vibrant, and it's exciting, right? And people doesn't have that barrier in their head now about the limitations of what can be done. And I want to relate that to the business I'm running. I'm CEO of Morph Labs, or a cloud computing infrastructure company. I'm going to skip through this interesting slide, but I'm going to talk about why entrepreneurship in the Philippines is vibrant, and in particular in the software industry, right? We have an incredible capability to create technology, but we have a very unique capability of EQ. Filipinos inherently are great at designing, right? We can communicate, we can emotionally connect, right? We can visualize, we can, you can put this in, in, in design, right? And you combine that with technology, we have a great opportunity. And great opportunity is, is in what we can do in cloud computing, and specifically in applications that live on the cloud. And the reason why that's very exciting is cloud computing and software and software for the cloud is very visible. We already know what it is, right? If you look at 60 seconds of the internet, about 700,000 wall posts gets posted, 168 million emails get sent, about 390,000 tweets happen. Right? And it's accessible and something that we can do here in the Philippines and if you combine that with the cloud computing infrastructure, that's the recipe of taking software, taking software from open source, creating that into a product, and then putting that in an infrastructure that levels the playing field. Right? When I was building my first startups, I did not have this. Startups of today have an incredible opportunity to have one building block being open source, second important building block being cloud computing. Right, where the servers that you used to capitalize is now something you can rent like electricity. And that's what cloud computing does. And that's why I'm really excited about entrepreneurship because I like it, 
but most importantly because my company sells the infrastructure for cloud computing. <laughs> so I make money as well. <laughs> um, but what's really important in, of, of, in, in what cloud computing has brought to the market, and this is started by Google, is that it, it, it's not from where you expect it to be. It's not complex, expensive, big iron machines. The commodity hardware is cobbled together, designed to scale infinitely, additive over time. This technology then is exposed by a software. So instead of black box hidden code around a data center somewhere else that you have to go and modify and everything else, it's infrastructure that's already deployed, that has an API, and that you can access in real time on an hourly basis. So these are ingredients that's now available in the Philippines. It's something that I'm really excited about, something that is a unique capability for the ASEAN region to leverage and grow forward. And it's something that's a formula that, that, uh, that, that we're seeing. So I just want to end this slide with a quote from our president uh, after Hack to Hatch. And he basically talked about, you know, the quickest path to progress for this country is one which we capitalize our nation's greatest assets, and that's our people. And in software, and when you innovate in software, about 99% of your ingredient is human capital. And... Uh, and we're very excited to be a part of that. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see more and more SMEs get built in the Philippines, in technology, and in Asia in general, and ASEAN in specifically. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you. And thank you, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. <laughs>